Hello everyone, this is Kangar, welcome back to Skyrim VR. Today I will have another mod video for you. This is not a new mod, you probably have heard of it already, and it is VRIK. I will talk about how you can set it up properly and uh, what you can actually do. For people that don't know it, this mod gives you your complete body as an inverse kinematics animated body inside Skyrim VR including finger animations, weapon holsters and even gestures to cast shouts and spells. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How fitting. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. So, for a start, I definitely recommend you go to the Nexus mod page and download the latest in-dev version. These are versions that Prog has made available, um, which are improvements over the official 0.8 version at the moment and they've been around for quite a while so uh, they can be definitely considered stable. I'm using it myself for weeks or maybe months already and yeah, I definitely recommend checking these out. There are some improvements, for example, the ENB Sun right there does not need a fix anymore, it just works out of the box. So if you are using an ENB, then you can just use that and uh, and the sun works very well and that's it basically. Um, before that you had to do uh, some manual calculations depending on your VR scale, which is now part of the mod itself. So, when you first load up the mod in your, in your previous character or you start a new character, you will find the calibration menu happening automatically. Um, you can also do that manually, uh, recalibrate whenever you want, and for that you have to not do what I just do, uh, what I'm doing right now, which is standing on an uneven surface, but instead you have to stand on a flat ground uh, like this and you have to not have your weapons out because that changes your body animation. Alright, so if you have that you can go to magic and to powers and select the calibration power. So I have that already selected. And then you just do it and it basically just tells you that it's now calibrating and for that you either you first choose the size so you can set it to default or you can set it to taller which I prefer because I'm a little taller in real life and then when you have selected the size you want you just calibrate the VR scale. It's important that for this you stand upright and relaxed as you would stand while you play. So just do that and then you see that the world is calibrated around you. You can check this by using in the configuration menu here in VRIK you can see that the player height should hover around zero. It's not important if it's exactly at zero but that's what it should be around and then you can select or adjust your VR scale as you see fit. For example if you want to change it you can do that by changing it and then in my case pressing the trigger button. Um, these are not exactly right all the time but yeah that's that's what works for me um you have to you have to check which button is uh, working for you uh, depending on the controller you have that's different all right so while we are here you can do a lot of other settings you can change a lot of other settings for example your arm length arm size these kind of things or uh Something that I very much recommend changing is the hand size. For example, if you want to have super tiny hands, you can do it like that. And it's absolutely hysterical. It's, it's, I mean, <laughs> I've done that so many... <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I've done that <laughs> so many times. <laughs> and it's still, <laughs> it's still, it's, it's just too good. Just please do it. Just do it once. Yeah. Uh, you can also go the other way around, of course. <laughs> it's just as hilarious. <laughs> so if you play, <laughs> if you play an unarmed character, <laughs> and you want to like really feel <laughs> you smashing, smashing things, please <laughs> do this. And it's uh, it's going to be absolutely uh, glorious. You did it. You killed the dragon. Yes, I did. Can you like move along? Cool. Okay. Something that you should know is that um, when you scale the hands, you automatically also scale the weapons because they always match your hand. So that's something that you should know or keep in mind. So let's uh, get rid of these again. Um, as, I s as you could see before I had a hand size of 0.8. No, 0.9. Okay. Well, I think it was 0.89 because of the calibration. Yeah. So these values are also automatically calibrated. So that's uh, as far as I know, uh, if I remember correctly, that's so that's important for you to know. Um, but yeah, so in my opinion, the, 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 the calibration works very well, but as you could see, you can tweak everything to your liking. For example, when your arms stretch, when you stretch your arm, they should not, um, they should not like twist or turn in a weird angle. So that's very important for the inverse kinematics to work. Okay, so you know how to calibrate your body and what else can you do with VRIK? The first thing to mention is definitely the weapon holsters. So you have already seen that one in action. When you bring your controller close to a holster, you will feel a little vibrating vib vibration pulse uh, happening and then you can uh, press the holster button that you have in your VRIK controller scheme in my case it's the grip button and you press it you pull it release the button and here goes your weapon and of course do the inverse go to the con uh, to the holster press the button and it's holstering so uh, importantly uh, it will um, remember the last spell you had in your hand so drawing a weapon and Holstering again will still have you equipped with the spell. It's very important, for example, for spell siphon. Okay, now there are a few things to mention, and that is, assuming you already have a holster and you want to move it or remove it, you go there with your controller and press the button for three seconds, and then you can reposition the holster however you want, or you can even when pulling you can even remove the entire holster so it is deleted and now we come to the question how can you do the holstering that I will show you you equip the weapon you want to holster and then there is no holster yet you just bring your your uh, hand close there and press the button and there it is holstered in the weird position that we had before we have to reposition that okay something to mention is that not each holster can carry each weapon by default for example daggers uh, uh, can be put on the forearm but weapons and uh, other weapons cannot uh, i believe also um two-handed uh, weapons can go to your shoulder and the bow but it, they cannot go to your hips if I remember correctly these things can all be configured in the MCM which you can see here Again. when going to the holster options so you can first enable or not enable them of course and uh, you can select the feedback strength many things and so on and here in the holster types you can for example select which hand can use them is there feedback 
which weapons can go there and so on. There is even the option to completely reset the position if you lost the holster, you don't quite know where it is, maybe it's for some reasons uh, moved inside the body and so on. So you can do that all here. Um, maybe as a side note, when you first um, position a dagger in your fo on your forearm holster slot, it will be kind of awkwardly inside the arm. So it's not gone, the dagger is not gone, but you kind of have to search for the holster and then reposition it. It's very easy to do if you know it. Okay. But that is something that you probably know already. It's been, uh, it's not a new feature, but um, I mean, technically nowadays, it's also not a new feature anymore. But what you have now is the gestures. And maybe before I go into that, um, there's something really cool for people that have um, Oculus Touch or Index Controllers. Um, you can, on the one hand, select the compatible index bindings and uh, use the same thing in Steam VR as the controller bindings. And then you can use hand animations. Um, you've seen that already a few times, probably in my videos. It's this. It's very, very nice. Scales down your, your spells to fit in your hands. And, um, and yeah, you can move your fingers. It does not move the, the three fingers um, independently of each other, but if you touch the grip, this is what happens. The thumb works independently, thumbs up, and the index also works independently. So, then, let's go to the real stuff. Gestures. So, that is new. In the gesture overview, you can see what gestures there are and what you selected to use for that. Gestures are, well, you press a button, you perform a gesture and you release the button and then a lot of different things can happen. I mainly use it to cast shouts or to cast spells that are fire and forget spells or to cast, uh, no, to select a spell, so to equip a spell. Importantly, in the controls here, you can select which button you want for even left and right controller in, uh, dependently. To note here is that I'm not entirely sure if, these, if the names are correct for all controllers. Um, I know that for Windows Mixed Reality, uh, that's not always the, the case. So um, if you select everything and you think that everything should work but it doesn't maybe play around with the buttons here and see which one works okay so you have a gesture overview and s let's say i want to do something new um let's say i want to uh, move my hand up my right hand up and down while pressing the b button and doing that, I cast a spell or shout, and that w so, so you f you have to select it and then exit it. It's already uh, selected. Then you cast a spell or shout. You can select the spell you want to do, and that would, for example, be fast healing in this case. So I have right B up and down, release. And then I will cast fast healing. So just to show it. Okay, so uh, I had a little bit a different gesture. Uh, I was probably too slow. So now I'm out of <laughs> magic, I think. Okay. Anyways, you know, uh, you know that it works. You see that it works. Um, usually these gestures work very well. Uh, this is a fairly new character, so I'm out of st uh, out of Magicka uh, fairly quickly, but you get the gist. And very, very importantly, this also works with shouts. So uh, I have a uh, right button press, uh, move hand forward and release as uh, Fus Roda selected. So if I do this. <laughs> I do the foos shout and this 
works very very nicely same thing um, you go to the gesture overview here and I have whoop, unrelenting force when moving the hand forward and here and that's very important in shouts you can select how many words you want to cast so in my case this is a new character this character doesn't have all three words yet but I can still select the three words and it works so technically um, this is a little bit of a longer press I think um, so I could optimize it a little bit but honestly I don't care so this works very well and it's also very intuitive and very immersive so I highly recommend using shouting and casting spells with uh, with these uh, with these gestures all right something that you definitely should know is that the Skyrim win window has to be in focus when doing that so when you're doing the VR AK shouts you have to have Skyrim VR in focus otherwise it won't work and in the moment you put Skyrim VR into focus it will crash your game so um, that's very important there is a mod Skyrim refocused that al automatically focuses on Skyrim so that's very nice and uh, I need to ask you to stop that shouting is making people nervous you gotta be kidding me okay 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 won't happen again good glad we straightened that out okay okay guards huh all right where was I? I think I was done. Um, the very, very last thing that you might want to know is that, again, with the Index or the Oculus Touch controllers, you can cast spells when the hand opens or when it closes and then opens. So, or never, obviously. Never would be just cast with the tr uh, trigger, as always. And this is the, like, all crazy option that means as soon as you open your hand you cast the spells and that's a little bit uh, tricky so you either have to really make sure to never open your hand um, when no, uh, when not w wanting to cast a spell or you might uh, have a problem at some point but so as you can see I just open my hands and cast spells which is absolutely cool and um, immersive but as I said can be a little bit uh, tricky sometimes so that was it for today I hope it was informative to you I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please give me a thumbs up and also drop me a comment I'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys and also Please tell me what you would like to see or don't want to see and yeah, then see you in the next video. Bye!